for this to be no, it's actually okay. He's, this is fine. This is the best way. And I remember sobbing about it all day and going to a man that I really trusted and hoping to be encouraged to have some, I guess, empathy for what I was going through. And he said, Megan, this is God's will and you will eventually get it or you won't, you know, this kind of, you're wrong. This is, this is great. Um, this is God's will. And for me, I felt like this is not the God I know. This is not, I I was, I was severely disillusioned. Um, And it kind of sent me into a tailspin (laughs) Um, and questioning everything. If, If this is the context I come from, and this is what they care about, what does this mean for what I've dedicated my life to? And so um, it was, you know, around that time where I started to see a therapist, thank goodness, I needed therapy, I needed to kind of find my footing. Um, You know, I had some childhood trauma, and it felt like this was like, bringing up all of the trauma I had as a child I had was bringing up sexual assault was bringing up all of these um, things and like, God, where are you? Is this you? Is this what you want? And, and really having to, to find God in the midst of that. And I felt like God uh, was actually with me and understood me and was closer than my skin. And uh, there's a story I tell about in the book where, um, so I talk, I have a podcast called Faith and Feminism. You've heard me talk. I, you know, that I've probably upset people and I certainly have um, gotten terrible emails telling me I should be raped. I've had friends and family send me terrible emails. Um, I had one friend uh, tell me that she, because um, I believed Dr. Ford during the Kavanaugh hearings, um, because I believe survivors um, tell me, she told me that, um, she couldn't be associated with the liberal agenda. She reduced me to the liberal agenda and said she couldn't be associated with me anymore. And I remember this was after weeks of a lot of conflict with my in-laws. They didn't believe that women should preach or teach or have any role of leadership in the church. And because I did, they thought we weren't Christians and that we were going to hell. And it eventually blew up to such a degree where my husband and I canceled our um, flights home. And so, and, and then I was getting this, it was actually my 30th birthday. And I got this message from a a dear friend that I had been friends with since high school telling me, I can't support you. And I remember feeling like, maybe I am wrong. Maybe God is not who I think God is. Maybe God is severely disappointed in me. And I remember running out to my car, sobbing and sobbing and sobbing because I can take the disappointment of friends and family and strangers on the internet, but what I cannot take are, is God being against me. And I remember just like crying, feeling like raves of rejection roll over me. And as I was crying in the car, I couldn't drive home. I couldn't see, I was crying too hard. And this woman knocked on my door and uh, of my car in a Starbucks parking lot and uh, was motioning me to get out of the car. And I was like, okay, this is super weird. But also I felt something in me tell me to get out of the car. And I got out of the car and she immediately pulled me into a hug and just held me as I sobbed. And she kept on saying, I'm not letting you leave until you know how loved you are. I'm not letting you leave until you know how loved you are. And just praying the Christian Jesus's name over me. And it was such a profound experience to me because in the span of, you know, half an hour, I've been rejected uh, in the name of the Christian God in, in the name of Jesus. And less than half an hour later, this random woman appears telling me that I'm loved as I am and that God's proud of me and, and praying things that there's no way she could know what I was dealing with. In fact, I never spoke because I was crying too hard. I literally could not speak. And I just remember feeling like, okay, God sent me this woman to show me that I'm not alone, that I am, like, God is still pleased with me. God is still proud of me. God has not left my side. And so for me, whenever I start to doubt God, I feel like, you know, it was about a year, about maybe a year and a half from when Trump was elected to that moment. And, or maybe almost a year. I, I don't quite, I think it was almost a year. No, it was two years. Sorry. It was <laughs> it was like two years. And I felt like I was kind of in many ways feeling like I was doubting God uh, for those two years, feeling really lost. But I feel like that moment just submitted 
of course, God is with me. God is closer than my skin. And so, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I've had those moments of doubt. I've had those moments of feeling like God has left me and, and God does not look like the patriarchal version I was taught. So I had to do a lot of unlearning of that and feeling untethered from that. But, um, I'm so confident that God is a liberator now. Like it doesn't, I don't try and earn God's good graces by like, you know, spending an hour reading my Bible every morning or like publicly praying or trying to appear holier than thou. My relationship with God, I think is a lot more authentic. Um, and I don't feel like I constantly owe God something. I feel like God loves me as I am and I don't have to prove myself and I don't owe God something. And truly the work I do is not because I'm trying to earn something. It's because I've seen my bloody hands. And I want to do better. And so um, I think that's what repentance has looked like for me. And so I do, I do feel close with God, but it doesn't look like I was taught it would look. Well, I think you've developed the heart that God has. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what we're, hopefully that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Like you've mentioned, who did God care about in the Bible? Who did Jesus mm-hmm. spend his time with? Mm-hmm. Um, who did he give stern you know, rebuke. Mm-hmm. rebuke. Yeah. And I just, I mean, I relate to that pain of mm-hmm. being condemned for, you know, I like this author and therefore I'm not a Christian anymore. That yeah. hurts when, mm-hmm. you know, when that was told to me. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. Yeah. I'm feeling that. And yeah. I just think that's like the the heart of God, like you've mentioned, is to love those that are um, really broken by a system and, you know, widows and orphans is, mm-hmm. is the phrase that we, that we see in the Bible. But, you know, there's also like the Samaritans and mm-hmm. the, um, you know, even how Jesus loves the Pharisees at moments. Yeah. Like, there's just so much to be gained. Mm-hmm. And. It, I just feel like, wow, you've done a lot of work in a short period. Like it feels like yeah. it's been fast, you know, mm-hmm. and not everybody's story is, is like that. Um, and yeah, I guess um, maybe my last question, um, thank you so much for taking time to do this. Um, yeah. So what is the, the message that you would give to my eight-year-old daughter like what is what do what do I need to teach her as her parent and you know my wife obviously there's other family members too but yeah just the message to the the girls that are that are young and and trying to figure out this world um that that they're in I think that would be um I don't know if you thought about it at all I mean, yeah. And every time I, gosh, I'd also just, sometimes I like think about little girls being emotional and like want to cry. Like I'll see them in the grocery store. I'm like, oh my God. Okay. Um, there is so much I want to say. I think growing up as a woman, you get so many messages about Mm. your worth. We grow up with phrases, uh, uh, that it's bad to be a girl. So we hear things like you run like a girl, you throw like a girl, uh, women superheroes are not like you young boys are not taught to look up to women um they're only taught to look up to men whereas women or young girls are taught like oh you know either superhero is fine and so I think even that is an example of how women aren't valued and so I think for me what I want to say to the little girl is like you are not less because you're a woman you are not less, you're not weaker, you are not less intelligent, you are not, you are so much more than what they've told you. And I think so much of that is, we're told that we're less in so many different ways. We're told that our value comes from the way we look, the way our body is, if we're sexually attractive to men. And, and so many messages that we get are 
do men like you? Do men like it's it's such a catch 22 because we're told we need to be sexually attractive to men, but then we're shamed for being sexually attractive to men. There's there's not a way that we can exist and so much of our existence we've been told is to look beautiful and to be desirable. And what I want to say is you're so much more than that. You're 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 not put on this planet for men. You're put on this planet cuz I feel like God thought the world needed you and wasn't complete without you. And you are not in service to anyone else. <laughs> um, you exist as a whole person on your own. And so, uh, yeah, that's what I would say to her. Mm-hmm. You're not less, you're fully human. You've been made in the image of God and you're not here to serve other people or to be there for their pleasure. You are here because there's something really special and unique about you. And I encourage you to step into that instead of shrinking back. Mm 